on the first day of the next accounting period, accountants have the option to perform what is called reversing entries. I said option because as discussed in part 1 of this video series, reversing entries are not mandatory. The idea behind these entries is to cancel out certain adjusting entries, namely, number 1, the accrued expense, number 2, accrued income, number 3, prepaid expense or deferred expense, when the expense method was used in recording the advance payment, and number 4, unearned or deferred income when the income method was used in recording the advance collection. For consistency in the accounting procedure of recording income and expenses. From the term reversing entries, we just have to reverse these four mentioned adjusting entries. The other types of adjustments not mentioned here must not be reversed. Again, let me stress the types of adjustments that may be reversed. Number one, accrued expense. Number two, accrued income. So, both accrual adjustments may be reversed. Number three, prepaid expense or deferred expense. When the expense method was used in recording the prepayment. In other words, if the asset method was used, the adjusting entry concerning prepaid expense must not be reversed. And number four, unearned or deferred income when the income method was used in recording the advance collection. Meaning, if the liability method was used, no reversing entry may be made. Having discussed that, let us take a look at our adjusting entries on December 31, 2019 for Benipayo General Merchandising and determine which of these adjusting entries may be reversed. Letter A adjustment with a debit to office supplies and a credit to supplies expense. What type of adjusting entry is this? Prepaid expense because office supplies were purchased and paid for prior to use. There was advance payment and therefore, this is a prepaid expense or deferred expense adjustment. But remember, prepayment can be recorded by using either the asset method or the expense method. The question is, what method was used to record the advance payment? Expense method. How did we know? Because here, in our adjusting entry, we credited supplies expense, which means that this account supplies expense had been debited upon payment for the supplies. Remember, in my video about this type of adjustment, when upon advance payment, an asset account was debited, in the adjusting entry, that asset account must be credited. But when an expense account was instead debited to record the prepayment, then in the adjustment, that expense account must be credited. Since here in letter A adjustment, the account supplies expense is credited, that means this expense account was debited upon prepayment. And hence, the expense method was used. So, if this adjusting entry is regarding prepaid expense under the expense method, may this adjustment be reversed? Yes, because it is one of the four types of adjustments is stated here. Prepaid expense or deferred expense under the expense method. To reverse, the debited account of his supplies in the adjusting entry has to be credited while the credited account supplies expense needs to be debited for the same amount of 3,500. Letter B adjusting entry now. What type of adjustment is this? Depreciation. May this be reversed? No, because it is not one of the four types mentioned earlier, right?
Third, adjusting entry. What type of adjustment is this? Prepaid expense, of course. Having one account named prepaid insurance. But what method was used to record the advance payment? Asset method. Because prepaid insurance, which is an asset account, is credited here. Which means this very same account was debited upon prepayment. So prepaid expense under asset method. May this be reversed? No. Because only expense method of prepayment is allowed to be reversed. Letter D, adjustment now. A debit to interest receivable and a credit to interest income. So, what type of adjustment do we have here? There is receivable and income. Therefore, this is uncollected income. Income already earned but not yet collected, which is what? Accrued income. May this kind of adjustment be reversed? Yes, accruals may be reversed, whether accrued income or accrued expense. So to reverse, debit what was credited in the adjustment, which is interest income, and credit what was debited, which is interest receivable for the amount of 1,125. That's why we have this second reversing entry. Next, letter E. What type of adjusting entry is this? With a debit to an expense account and a credit to a payable account. Accrued expense, meaning expense already incurred that's why the debit to an expense account, but not yet paid. That's why the credit to a liability account. Again, accrual may be reversed. So debit, salaries payable. And credit, salaries expense for 100000 That is our third reversing entry. Letter F adjustment is about budget's expense which is not among the four mentioned types of adjusting entries allowed to be reversed. So, on to letter G now. Notice, this is very similar to letter E. Because this is also accrued expense. So, we may reverse this. How do we reverse? Debit, rent payable. And credit, rent expense. For 30000 That is now our fourth reversing entry. Next, letter H. Accrued expense again, right? So, reverse this also. Debit, interest payable. And credit, interest expense. For 1,312.50. Finally, adjustment letter I. This is about merchandise inventory at the end per physical count, which is not to be reversed. Just like in my other videos, I will teach you an easier way to determine if a certain adjusting entry may be reversed. If an adjustment increased either an asset account except with regards to merchandise inventory and or a liability account, then that adjusting entry may be reversed. Otherwise, it must never be reversed. Let's take a look at these adjusting entries. Notice, this first one has a debit to office supplies, causing an increase in the asset account office supplies. Therefore, According to the tip I just gave you, this letter A adjustment may be reversed. Which else increased either an asset or a liability? Letter B did not. Letter C did not also. Letter D adjustment 
did increase the asset interest receivable. So, this adjusting entry may be reversed. This one, increase the liability account salaries payable. Because this salaries payable is credited here. In short, this adjustment may also be reversed. This letter F adjustment neither increased an asset nor a liability account. So, this one must not be reversed. Adjusting entries G and H may be reversed because they both increased liability. This adjusting entry to record the merchandise inventory end per physical count increased asset. But as stated here, is an exception. So, the adjusting entry regarding merchandise inventory end must not be reversed. And so, we have five reversing entries here. Now, let me explain briefly the mentioned purpose of reversing entries here. For consistency in the accounting procedure of recording income and expenses. As an example, what is the usual entry to record the payment of expense? Debit the expense account. Okay? Debit the expense account and credit cash, right? Now, let's say we did not prepare a reversing entry for this adjustment letter E. Upon the eventual payment of these salaries, will it be correct to make the usual debit to salaries expense? Of course not. Otherwise, salaries expense would have been recorded twice. In addition, the liability account salaries payable would not be eliminated. In other words, if no reversing entry was made for this adjustment, Upon payment of this 100,000 pesos worth of salaries to the employees, the debit must be to the account salaries payable, not to the usual salaries expense. But if a reversing entry was made, the account salaries payable would have been eliminated so that upon payment of the salaries to the employees, Salaries expense may then be debited. 